Warning, the following program has been rated T for truth. You can't handle the truth. Oh, we think you can. Welcome to the Naked Truth Report with your host, truth warrior and myth buster, Kathleen Wells. The place where we distinguish fact from fiction, where data is used to drive points home, and where Kathleen takes the position that Democrats and black politicians have destroyed black America. Welcome to the Naked Truth Report. Now, your host, Kathleen Wells. Yeah, I'm on. Okay, great. Uh, we have a guest. Uh, she's been on before. Dr. Wen Chen is going to be our guest. And we're going to talk, I'm going to title the show, uh, Dr. Wen Chen on China, Communism and Coronavirus, the three C's. But before I bring her on, uh, I'd like to mention a few things naturally. Uh, one of the things I want to mention is that, uh, let's see, on Washington Journal, they had a, uh, tribute to John Lewis. So I called in and I said, well, you know, what did I say? Something to the effect that John Lewis has represented Atlanta for so many years. And now, uh, black American home ownership, black American home ownership, um, in Atlanta has been re- decreased or reduced to 25%. Under uh, John Lewis's tutelage, or when he was when he was holding office in Congress. Also, I mentioned the fact that uh, let's see, fatherless homes. I mentioned the data point about mm, Black America is now facing uh, zero, 20, zero median wealth by 2053. The, despite the fact that we've been voting Democrat for six day, decades, and despite the fact that we have at um, nine thousand at least nine thousand Black politicians, I mentioned that fact. And then I also mentioned the fact about the uh, the. Mm, number of fatherless homes, how that's changed. In the 20s and the 30s, uh, we had more uh, two-parent families in the 80 percentile, 80 percent, not 80 percentile, 80 percent, 87 percent two-parent families uh, at the turn of the uh, 20th century, early 20th century. Uh, so someone then called in and said, you know, they responded to what I said because I said the my point was that the civil rights movement has failed black America. It's an utter failure. So this is just the truth, whether or not John Lewis died or not. It's just the truth matters. So someone called in and they said, well, it's the system that has failed black Americans. It's the system. And so I was listening to uh, Mark Levin come uh, before I came into the station. And yes, this is what the left is saying. And people who believe the left, Democrats, the leftists, they believe that the system has failed black America. And that's something I think that uh, Dr. Francis Cress Wellesley would say, white supremacy, the system of white supremacy has failed black America. But my response to that is, Liberal policies, LBJ's Great Society, and free sex feminism, which black folks, black Americans, my people voted for for decades, put fathers out of the home. Not the system. John Lewis is a part of that system, embracing liberal ideology. That's one thing I wanted to mention. The other thing I wanted to mention is that... um, the, fo- the foundation for America are her founding principles are found in her U.S. Constitution. The fabric of America is found in her U.S. Constitution and her Declaration of Independence. Those principles found in those founding documents. And uh, this is the point that uh, Mark Levin made along with uh, Ben Shapiro. They, they were both saying how the left want to break apart the system. They're saying the system of America is flawed, which is also what the 1619 Project says. But those documents were uh, embraced by Frederick Douglass and by Martin Luther King. The principles in those documents were embraced to say that black Americans should be included in those documents, in those principles. Martin Luther King and uh, Booker T. Washington and Frederick Douglass used those documents to argue the inclusion of black Americans. Yet the Marxists 
want to get rid of the documents. Yet the 1619 Project, which I was just looking at some of that uh, stuff, Nicole Hannah-Jones is the one who has created the um, – 1619 Project, and she won a Pulitzer Prize for it. They are rewriting history, and they're not embracing the foundation, the foundational principles uh, embodied in the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. So those are the few, and in fact, John Calhoun, who was a seventh former, who was a seventh uh, vice president, he was pro-slavery, and he wanted to get rid of the uh, – or amend or change the Declaration of Independence and the uh, Constitution. That's what he argued. Anyway, let's welcome uh, my guest, Dr. Wen Chen. This is her second time on the show, and she is a uh, bioscientist at Caltech. And so this show is titled Dr. Wen Chen on – Communism, China, Communism, and Coronavirus. So, Dr. Wen Chen, uh, welcome to the Naked Truth Report. It's, I'm glad to be here, Kathleen. I'm glad to have you. Uh, this is your second time. So, give us an up. Can you give us an update on coronavirus? Because we know that Mayor Garcetti is threatening to lock down Los Angeles completely again. What's your update? Uh, you mean about China or like uh, the overall? Just um, overall, your thoughts about what the, what is the latest on the virus? What you know? Okay, last time I spoke on this program was March, so we have. I mean, we've got many discoveries since then. I think the first was uh, soon, like uh, people uh, started to talk about the association with uh, Wuhan lab, and uh, there were some reports, like although people. You know, China tried to hide the origin of the coronavirus. Uh, the government of China do not allow Chinese scientists to do any research on the source, like the origin of the coronavirus. However, outside of China, quite a few scientists were able to use uh, other data related to Wuhan uh, for some discovery. And one of the uh, first uh, report I had read was quite interesting was uh, they were able, people were able to get the cell phone signal, like a cell phone uh, information in Wuhan, and they found like uh, the, the Wuhan uh, the lab, the people biology, a uh, bio lab, like uh, the, the lab that studies um, coronavirus in Wuhan. There were about uh, two weeks last October that the lab had no cell phone signal at all. So that suggested like it's very likely um, the lab was shut down for two weeks. And that was quite interesting because what can cause such a, a virus lab to shut down for two weeks with no cell phone signal? And does that suggest there's a leak? Um, that's something interesting uh, to think about. And another research I read was also interesting to bring to your attention was um, uh, people were able to get uh, satellite uh, uh, pictures of the hospitals, the parking lots of the uh, of the Wuhan hospitals, and they compared the parking lot to see how many cars were parked there uh, last summer and fall, comparing with the data before in the previous years, and they discovered that the the hospital visit like uh, pretty much like tripled last summer and fall, comparing with the year before. So like uh, many more people were ill. Uh, like uh, last summer. And then, like, uh, people also checked. We were able to find, like, uh, the, how many people are searching the keywords on on the websites, like uh, Google's, well, I mean, like, uh, you can type any keyword. Like, whenever people get ill, right, they start to do Google search. And in China, they had no Google, but they still perform uh, searches on Baidu or their search engine. And uh, the search for, like, uh, those keywords related to uh, COVID-19, uh, already, like, uh, dramatically increased last summer. So that suggests, like, uh, China is very likely that Wuhan had some outbreak much, much earlier than we know. And the most recent update about this um, coronavirus is that uh, there was one uh, virus uh, researcher, like uh, one of the experts who work in University of Hong Kong, escaped uh, Hong Kong in, uh, in late April, and she arrived in uh, um, America on April 28th. And after, uh, she was like, uh, 
she studied the coronavirus in Hong Kong, and she, her lab was associated with WHO, uh, with who, with WHO. And she told reporters in the U.S. that when she was studying coronavirus, because she was responsible for communicating with the disease control center in China, so she knew that on December 31st, she was already very sure that the virus was had has had human to human transmission and uh, she told her supervisor uh in the Hong Kong lab and who works together with WHO and both of her supervisors told her to not to say anything and otherwise they will disappear that sounds like uh, something very uh, familiar for any human rights uh you know abuses in China anyone said anything that the government don't want you can get disappeared easily. And she was so upset that uh, she decided to escape just uh, several hours after she left Hong Kong. Her family in Qingdao, because she was, her, her family was in China, uh, I, I in China. Her family in, in China were harassed, immediately visited, just several hours after she left Hong Kong. Um, her family in China were already visited by the Chinese police, and basically they were told by, uh, to threaten the her to not to say anything. So I think like uh, her experience clearly indicated that China has been deliberately mm-hmm. uh, hiding the facts of coronavirus much earlier than we knew. Mm-hmm. So that is what I can uh, update about. And, yeah, you know, and that's very material, very relevant. Uh, China has been hiding. Uh, in fact, the CDC initially said there was no human-to-human uh, transmission. And China knew earlier, we are, we are finding out now, the evidence is coming out now, that China knew much earlier about coronavirus and deliberately, intentionally hid this information from the world. Yet the left is trying to blame, the Democrats are using the virus uh, as a weapon against uh Trump saying he's mishandling the coronavirus. Uh, and it's a hypothetical because they said, I saw a poll that mentioned um, Biden would have uh, uh, operated better than Trump under the coronavirus. They conducted a poll on that. Well, that's a hypothetical because we don't know what he would have done. But let's Yeah, talk- exactly. Go I ahead. think that was very unfair. I also want to add that the whole world believed what the Chinese government told them in early January because, you know, nobody knew what was going on. And when China was the only source, uh, information source, people believed that. And I want to give another example. It was on January 5th, and one of the labs in Shanghai, they sequenced the coronavirus, and they immediately discovered that that was very similar to SARS. And just from the sequence, they can tell that this is highly, highly contagious. And that scientist in Shanghai, she, he reported to at least the four um, different organizations in China, uh, you know, but for a whole week, he didn't get any reply. So what he did was that he risked his life, his whole career. He uploaded the sequence of coronavirus to Gene Bank. That was international data uh, warehouse for, for, for many, like, uh, sequences, gene sequences. And he expected, like, like, okay, people all over the world, every scientist can download this sequence and just look at it, you will know what is this. This is really, really dangerous. It's not like what the Chinese government told you that it's okay. But what happened was that right after he, he published the sequence by himself, his lab was shut down immediately. But very, very sad, like, uh, the whole world Nobody said a thing. Like, just all these scientists all over the world can see this sequence, but everyone believed that, okay, the Chinese government told us this is fine, so this must be fine. So I would say it's very sad. Like, uh, you know, it was just a lesson. Like, all over the world, it doesn't matter, like, uh, whether you are conservative or you're liberal. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, it, it's just like uh, at that time, most of people have, have a have this kind of trust towards the Chinese government. But Taiwan was an exception because the government of Taiwan, they were highly suspicious about what the Chinese government told them. So actually, like, a, and also because they can read, they can read all the quoted rumors on Chinese internet. 
So they heard what the whistleblower told them, and they sent their own people to China to investigate. They actually went to Wuhan to, to check what was going on in, in Wuhan. And Taiwan was the first uh, country blocked uh, patients. Like, uh, they started to screen patients, uh, passengers, uh, like visitors from Wuhan since mid-December, and they also was the first country blocked the travel from China uh, after the outbreak. And that's why Taiwan did such a great job uh, for uh, coronavirus. Like, uh, they was just 81 miles away from China. They only had, like, 400 confirmed cases and seven deaths uh, uh, until, like, June. Like, uh, they did very, very well. Mm. So it's very unfair for the media and the left to use the virus against Trump because clearly the actions of China were deliberate, malevolent, malicious, diabolical, intentional. How could, how could, but for China, there would be no coronavirus spread like this. If we would have, if, if Trump would have known the information er, at its earliest point, Things would be different. So let's move on to now uh, how the com- how China. What is? Tell us how communist. You know, people want. Uh, they think capitalism is a bad thing. They hate America because it's based on the economic principle of capitalism. But let's talk. But you can't really talk about communism unless you talk to people who have lived under a communist system. Correct. Like we have actually, like the right, right. the whole story of coronavirus, like, uh, we're actually nowadays many people became uh, aware of the consequence of believing in Communist Party uh, in China uh, because they do not care for human rights. That also means they do not care for anyone's life. They do not care if they will put the whole world in disaster by hiding this uh, very critical information about the coronavirus. Um, they allowed people to travel from Wuhan to all over the world, or they blocked uh, all the transportation from Wuhan to their own uh, countries, uh, own cities. And the Chinese Communist Party has a long history uh, of persecuting Chinese people. Uh, in the past uh, 70 years, the Communist Party killed at least 80 million uh, Chinese people. And the first... Uh, uh, atrocity was the Great Famine in the 1950s and 1960s. At that time, like, the Communist Party in China uh, told people in China that, okay, well, communism, that means everyone submit your harvest to the government. We're going to distribute them equally. That's what a communism means, right? And, of course, farmers submitted all their harvest, but they, they were not distributed. Like, uh, um, that caused the death of 30 to 40 million Chinese people. They died from famine. They died from starvation because the authority, they sold the, uh, the, pro- the, the harvest to exchange for weapons, for other purposes, but they did not feed Chinese people. And media were not allowed to report that. And then uh, in the 1960s and 70s, there was the Great Cultural Revolution, that one when the Communist Party thought all education can give people independent thinking, and once people have independent thinking, they can criticize government. So they shut down the whole education system in China for 10 years, and over 2 million intellectuals were killed uh, because of the Great Cultural Revolution. They were persecuted. They were taken to countryside, and many of them died. And then, like, uh, you still remember, if you are old enough, you, you probably still remember the picture of Tankman. That was in 1989. Chinese government, the Communist Party, killed about uh, 10,000 uh, students or citizens in Beijing just because they protested, uh, asked for democracy. And people will never forget the Tiananmen Massacre because Western media broadly covers that. There were many uh, stories about it. But what you may not realize was that the persecution towards Chinese people never ended. Like, uh, they are still persecuting Chinese people. Uh, you, you probably still remember how they are on the news report, how they persecute the Uyghurs, uh, Xinjiang, in Mus- uh, it- and also uh, Chinese Communist Party persecuted Tibetans and Christians that never stopped. And also, according to Amnesty International, the biggest group persecuted in China is called Falun Gong. This is a Chinese meditation practice based on traditional Chinese culture. So these are the real Chinese people. They just carry their own culture. They meditate for better health. But it's just like the Cultural Revolution. 
this medication, just because it's based on traditional Chinese culture, was regarded by the Communist Party as independent thinking. So the Communist Party ordered a big crackdown towards Falun Gong, put millions of people to prison, and took, took their organs, because these are people meditate, they are healthy, they don't smoke, they don't drink. So the Communist Party has been selling their organs at international market, and the U.S. Congress passed a non-binding resolution in 2016 condemning organ harvesting in China uh, towards Falun Gong. And in California, in 2017, we also tried, California Senate tried, uh, attempted to push for a resolution condemning organ harvesting and the persecution towards Falun Gong in China. But guess what happened? Just before that resolution in California Senate was voted, the Chinese consulate in San Francisco made a phone call to the California Senate President, Kevin DeLeon, asking him to block that resolution. And DeLeon blocked that resolution. So California just remained silent towards the atrocity in China. So that was just one example of how the Communist Party infiltrated to the United States the Chinese Communist Party can give a phone call to the elected officials and ask him to block a resolution. And our elected officials actually listened to that. Wow, that's something. So when we come back from the break, we're going to talk about how the Communist Party has influence. The real enemy, a real problem in America is China, not Russia. Also, I want you to touch on how uh, the Communist Party came to power. How did that happen? What steps were taken? Uh, was the last emperor of China right after him, the last emperor of China, then did communism come in? Uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back from the break, we're going to continue with Dr. Wen Chen, who's a bioscientist at, bio, at, at Caltech. She's informing us about the bad things of communism. And the BLM folks, those Black Lives Matter folks, are Marxist slash communists. They believe they don't know anything about it. All they know is theory. Uh, yes, balance of nature is a fabulous thing. I'm, I've got so much energy now. You guys wouldn't believe it. I talk about it all the time. I think I'm going into my ninth month now. No, maybe eighth month. Eighth month. I'm going into the ninth month of something else, not a pregnancy, no. But, <laughs> but anyway, I'm going into eighth month of using uh, Balance of Nature. If you go to the website, balanceofnature.com or the nakedtruthreport.com and put in truth, naked truth, you get 35% off. I encourage you to do it. It's a good thing. I have more energy than ever before. Can you tell? I'm not really even looking at my notes. Well, you know, Dr. Wynne Cheney is taking up most of the conversation. That's fair. But, uh, you know, my memory is much better and my energy level is fantastic. So I recommend Balance of Nature. Uh, Jeff, let's take a break. Yeah, we need, we need air to breathe. We don't want to wear masks anymore, but Garcetti wants to make it mandatory that we wear masks in Los Angeles. Uh, one thing I, oh, one other thing I want to mention is this. Uh, these folks who want to rewrite history, the 1619 Project, these folks that are for taking down statues, erasing history, rewriting history, these anarchists, these Marxists and communists, believe that the Founding Fathers should have gone along with same-sex marriage. They don't understand uh, perspective and context. They don't understand, like Dennis Prager says, Noah was judged in his generations, was assessed in his... He was a good man for his generations. Everything is... Con context is important. So I'm speaking with Dr. Wen Chen, a bioscientist at Caltech, and she's talking to us about what? Communism. Tell us, Dr. Chen, how did communism, how and why did communism take a hold of China? That is through lies. The whole system of communism is built on top of lies. Like uh, ever since it emerged in China uh, in the 1920s, it has been lying to Chinese people. Like if you read its publication at that time, it sounds really like adding 
uh, Democratic Party, right? They will say, oh, everyone will be equal, and, uh, you know, we are going to live in a, in a perfect world. And that's how they got the trust, uh, first from the young students, because usually students, they were naive. They always had this fantasy of, you know, uh, living in a perfect world. And they were naive. They were brainwashed by all these lies. Um, and that the whole, whole like, a, um, well, it's, it's just mainly through the lies. And then, like, it was World War II. And while the Kuomintang, the Chinese government, the Democrat China, was fighting uh, Japanese, and the Communist Party, uh, they quickly uh, gained control because, you know, the, the Kuomintang, they were, like, a very busy with the war. And at that time, the Communist Party established their colonies in China and uh, strengthened their brainwashing. They were recruiting. They recruited tons and tons like, uh, of students to their, uh, their, their region and further brainwashed them. And unfortunately, by the end of the World War II, uh, after China defeated uh, Japanese, the Communist Party already gained enough power, enough control to overthrow uh, Kuomintang, and that's that's it. How like uh, uh, the Republic of China, the Democratic China, uh, re- like retreated, like they they left China, and now you can only find them in Taiwan. So Taiwan actually is a real Democratic China, and the whole mainland China, uh, the continent, uh, became controlled by the Communist Party. But if you look at how the Communist Party brainwashed the Chinese young students, they told people that everyone will be equal. Until during the Great Famine and the Cultural Revolution, Chinese people realized, okay, everyone was told to be equal, but some people were more equal than others. And, and I see the same thing happening in China now, uh, in the United States now, and I see many of our young generations, uh, they believed in the lies of the communism, and they thought like uh, China you know, can, is, is, is a good model for the world because they only see... What does the Communist Party show to them? Like outside of China, if you just read the media published by the Chinese government, you only see what they want you to see. And many Americans, like especially community leaders, business owners, elected officials, many were invited by the Chinese government to China for red carpet treatments. And once they visited China, they were all shown these nice pic images, like everything was arranged ahead of time. Every individual they speak to during the trip was arranged ahead of time. Like, for example, a college professor in the United States would be invited to go to China and give a lecture in the classroom in one of the top universities. But every student attending that seminar was chosen ahead of time. And every question they asked was chosen ahead of time. They actually rehearsed everything before the, before the lecture. And and then this professor very much like would come back with a very positive impression about the Communist Party, and then they would teach in their universities, in their high schools, and say nice words about the Communist Party, and that brainwash our uh, next generation. And that is just one example how our education system has been infiltrated by the Communist Party for decades. Um, like, uh, nowadays, like, it's not just people, like, uh, professors, educators invited to China. The Chinese government directly operate their propaganda system in the United States. Confucius Institute is a free Chinese language program. It teaches Chinese language, Chinese history in universities like UCLA, like Stanford or UC uh, Davis. They also operate in more than 500 high schools in the United States. And it's a free program. Like, uh, you know, the universities can get all the teachers, the textbooks, everything for free. But don't be fooled by the name. It teaches the Communist Party's version of Chinese history. For example, in Confucius Institute, you will never hear or allow any discussion about Tibet, Taiwan, or Tiananmen Massacre. And the teachers were hired from China. They must sign a contract that they cannot practice Falun Gong. And in local universities, for example, in University of Maryland, the local Confucius Institute blocks that university from inviting Dalai Lama from coming to give a, a commencement speech. And also on the website of Confucius Institute, people found this uh, history program about the Korean War, 
basically said Americans started the Korean War because Americans wanted to invade North Korea and then invade China. And that was exactly what I learned when I was a student in China. But we are talking about Stanford. Aren't you a, a very proud that you spend like tens of thousands of dollars to send your kids or grandkids to Stanford? But then they would learn Chinese there. They learn history from the Confucius Institute. And that's how they get brainwashed. Mm -hmm. And also, the Chinese government has been infiltrating to the United States media. You probably have heard how the uh, Chinese government, they try to buy New York Times. They try to buy some Western media, but it didn't work. But you, don't know, you may not know that a San Francisco Examiner is one of the major media, uh, English media in the Bay Area. It was bought by a Chinese family with close ties to the Chinese government, and they always report according to the need of the Communist Party. And the Chinese government's newspaper and TV can freely broadcast in the U.S. The Chinese global TV network um, broadcasts in six channels in the U.S., and the Chinese government's uh, newspaper, like uh, the China Daily, People's Daily, they were distributed in the whole U.S., and also... China has been paying the newspaper inversion. They call it a China Watch. Some of called times it's called International Daily. It's paid uh, as newspaper inversions to distribute together with uh, some mainstream media, including New York Times. China spent about $4.6 million to New York Times to carry their inversion. And they paid about $6 million to Wall Street Journal to carry their inversions. And these are not regular newspaper insertions because they look like a newspaper reports, but they are paid as advertisements. So, for example, Los Angeles Car Times carried 11 pages of the so-called International Daily on April 29th. And that was 11 pages of advertisement, but they all look like real news. They just look like identical to the rest of the Los Angeles Times. And the content was to promote how where uh, China dealt with COVID-19, how great was the Communist Party in treating their students, and all these propaganda were fed to us through Americans' own media. Mm -hmm. And Hollywood <clears throat> is also bought by China already. Do you have a question? Oh, no, no, I was listening. Go ahead. Hollywood is bought by China. Tell us. Yeah, AMC. We're not surprised. We're not surprised. We're so infiltrated. Yeah, we're, we're so infiltrated. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, uh, AMC Theater is the biggest cinema chain in the U.S. It was bought by a Chinese company called Dalian Wanda in 2012. And through Dalian Wanda and AMC Theater, the same company bought Legendary Entertainment. I'm sure many of you have watched Jurassic Park. That was made by Legendary Entertainment filmmaking company. And they, they also bought several other smaller uh, cinema chains and uh, filmmaking companies. And once this entertainment industry belonged to a Chinese company, they actually must follow the Chinese government's rule of what kind of film they can make and what kind of film they can show. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to be surprised. Like for, for decades, for like over a decade, Hollywood has not made much uh, comment about human rights in China. And the same thing about like NBA and all these, um, you know, business. They have like an audience. They want to get a China, China market. Um, they have to remain silent towards human rights in China. They have to criticize whoever the Chinese government wanted them to criticize or fire someone the Chinese government wanted them to fire. Um, so that is what is going on in our society in the U.S. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In fact, uh, the sports writer, I can't remember his name, he was on with Mark Levin talking about how LeBron, J LeBron J what's his name, LeBron <laughs> Yeah, I know that basketball. Uh, <laughs> no, but you see, yeah. I don't know basketball. LeBron James' interest is for China. He's promoting China and also um, the NBA becoming a global yes. organization. You see this whole thing about globalism, and, it, and it's propaganda infiltrating. So our real interest, or our real enemy, rather, is China, not Russia. Would you agree? I totally agree. Like, we talk about how the Chinese government control our education system, system, control our media. You don't see Russia do something like that. Like, you know, oh, I'm sure, like, many foreign countries, they want to do something similar, but they do not have that kind of money China has. 
And all this money came from trade. When Western companies do business with China, and when Western poli- politicians say, oh, we need to engage China, once we have the dialogue, they are going to embrace democracy. No, that was not true. Because the Communist Party, they have taken all Chinese people as their hostage. They use cheap labor or slave labor uh, when they uh, make products. And Chinese people actually do not benefit too much from the trade. They were used as slaves, as just I mentioned. And the Communist Party got the most power. And that's why they got so much money. They control so much money to uh, order their police to crack down dissidents, to persecute the Chinese people. They got so much U.S. dollars that they can buy our media. They can buy our universities. And they control the whole market. They can ask any Western company, if you want to enter China, you have to koto to the Communist Party. Otherwise, they don't give you the market. So China, the Communist Party, they are not a normal political party. It is a mafia. And when you do business with China, you have to think about it. You are doing business with mafia. Any benefit you, you give them, they use the money to persecute their own people. They use the money to come back, to control you, and and eventually you get yourself into trouble. Yeah, you, you know, more Americans should be aware of these facts that you're saying. You should be more in the mainstream media saying these facts. Yet, the Democratic Party and the left and Biden, they're pro-China. Yes, I see the more infiltration to, to them. Mm-hmm. than other party. And 5G, yeah. uh, let's see, TikTok, that's a social media application that's owned by China. Is that correct, TikTok? Exactly. Uh, TikTok and WeChat have been very uh, popular in the United States. WeChat were mostly used by uh, Chinese, local uh, Chinese Americans, and TikTok is very popular among, China, uh, among teenagers. But these are all controlled by the Chinese government, and they are censored. But the worst is that all your information from your cell phone were taken. Uh, once you install apps uh, created by Chinese companies, they all have the back door. So, for example, I'm a human rights speaker, so I never install any app made in China, and I never use any electronics. I don't use laptops or cell phones made in China because once we, I use any hardware or software made in China, that means they will be able to, to find out what I'm doing on my computer, on my cell phone. They're going to take all my contacts. They want to know all my passwords. So that is really dangerous. And I think India has done a great job recently. They banned 59 apps uh, made in China for the national security uh, reasons. They actually banned TikTok. Just like, uh, you know, overnight, you can't use TikTok in India anymore. Mm -hmm. I was very impressed. Like, you can just ban TikTok like that. And we should do the same in the United States. Yes, and also Huawei, right? Talk to us. Yes, exactly. Huawei uh, superficially sounds like a primary, uh, uh, you know, private company. But in China, any company grows so big, there's no way for it to be private uh, because the government controls everything. And Huawei, actually, the founder, had a military background. And his motto in the company uh, was very much like a military training, like uh, he said, we're starting a war, we're going to have like uh, this team, and and the whole culture of Huawei is very much like a Chinese military. They would lay off people after they were 35, like, uh, you know, all these uh, insider uh, told us about this. But when Huawei um, is uh, actually heavily uh, sponsored or supported by the Chinese government or get subsidies, they are able to sell their products in much lower price than other companies, other like companies in Western countries. And that's how they got market because everyone wants cheap product, right? The government of China, the Communist Party has been sponsoring Huawei to sell their product in much lower price so that they can dominate the market. And once they dominate the market, and 5G is totally different from 3G or 4G because 5G actually uh, has much more control of the infrastructure of the country. So the whole technology like, is totally different from 4G. So that means like once Huawei uh, enters the 5G market or dominates the 5G market in one country, and then Chinese government can give orders to Huawei 
to shut down your whole country with one with one button, and that is like a, it's, it, there's a agenda behind that, and that's why it's really dangerous. Just for example, France, uh, when they were desperate looking for medical supplies during the pandemic, that I think that was in March or April, um, France was def- desperate to buy uh, face masks. So they asked China to sell them one billion face masks. And the response of China is that, yes, we can sell you the face masks, but the conditions that you have to let Huawei enter your market. Wow. When I look at that, I thought, wow, that is something really dangerous. Like basically like they're choking your, your, your neck, say you want to live, then you must let us control you and we will be able to shut, shut you down, like with one button in right. the future. Right. So this is, that diabol- is it's diabolical. Yeah. 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 So basically anyone who is, uh, let's see, for the Democratic Party is anti-American, pro-Marxism, pro-communism, pro-China. Biden is pro-China. Democrats are pro China. Being pro China is being pro communism. Being pro- I think it's important for us to say um, they had they, they were deceived by the Communist Party. They had a fantasies towards communism. And it's really dangerous like if Americans are led by officials who has fantasy towards communism. And I would say that is really dangerous, and that's why we have to be very aware of this uh, before we pass our vote. Exactly. The Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the uh, Bernie Sanders, basically these far left, and Biden is embracing these far left principles, Elizabeth Warren, how they want to make everyone equal. This is communism, and it's bad. And the Chinese are infiltrating. We love the principles of America. They have not. Uh, it's been America is in like you know like a Persian rug that is rolled up, and it gradually un you gradually unroll the rug, and you see the pattern of America. She's a process. It's the evolution of America. We love America. That's why everyone's trying to get here, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's why I want to speak on this because we all came here and we embrace the freedom and we don't want this land to lose freedom. And I've been very worried when I saw the progress like in the past 12 years or 20 years, how the Communist Party infiltrated to the United States, to infiltrate to the society of the U.S. I feel very worried because I know that was how Communist Party gradually gained control in China. That's how, like, they deceived Chinese people, you know, 100 years ago. But yes. we see the same thing in the U.S. We're seeing and the same... Why, yeah, we're seeing the same I, I thing. I see the same trend. That's so dangerous. Like, it's so important for us to tell people. And especially, I'm worried, like, how the Communist Party infiltrated to our media. Because people mostly gain information from media. And when the mainstream media... I, we got to go people, when... When I'll see you. I'll see you soon. I appreciate you being. You were fantastic. I'm going to have you back on to talk about it more. This is the Naked Truth Report. My guest, Dr. Win Chen, and uh, we'll be back next week. Thanks.